first started playing with a computer as a kid, it seemed really limited to me. Because on a screen, all you can really do is make different blocks of pixels, different colors. And that's really powerful, but if we come out into the physical world, there's so much more you can do. Interacting with information and technology in the physical world is a fundamentally more compelling way to build richer experiences than what you might see on the screen. I'm James Patton. I'm an interaction designer and inventor, and I'm working to bring our experiences with computers out of the digital world and into the physical world. And the goal is to kind of create a new experience, something that no one's ever seen before. And one way to do that is to do some engineering to make new kinds of experiences possible. And that's one of my favorite techniques. Part of what the windows are about is let's push the boundaries in terms of what is, is possible with this kind of vocabulary that's expanded through the use of these physical machines. And there's kind of this contrast between this playful situation where unexpected things happen and the, the kind of like cold industrial steel. The Chase window for Christian Louboutin is an example of, of this, where um, there are two pairs of shoes, a man's pair and a woman's pair, and they engage in this really slow chase around the window. You know, there was a lot of opportunity for surprise because people look at it and they just sort of see two pairs of shoes sitting there. And it's spaced so that, you know, there's a lot of delay between when they move. So people are looking at the shoes and then all of a sudden one of the shoes moves. And it's kind of like, whoa, did the shoe move? And then that, I think, really surprises people. And it's really fun to, you know, just kind of see people experience that because it's really not what they were expecting. In the context of Windows at Barney's, a lot of this kind of engineering has been related to using a physical process to do something that most people would think about doing digitally. The magnifying glass is a great example. There's this process of, of manipulating video, which is something that's really easy to do with a computer. Essentially, what that window is, is a machine that is manipulating video using a very analog process. Where people like to see, oh, you know, this machine is creating this process and, you know, it's doing it in a beautiful way. You can experience both the, the result of that process, but also that process being created as well. Maybe my favorite example of this process is the water window for Kareen's world. I think people are more important than the clothes. Clothes, it just could be a nice envelope, but it's more important the letter inside the envelope than the envelope. There's a tray of water, and then there's a, a television underneath it, and a mirror above. And then there's a, a plumb bob that repeatedly causes these um, water ripples. And so what happens is you see those water ripples in the video image. I think seeing the machine that's actually causing this process to happen, and having the process happen in this analog way is, is a much more compelling you know, experience for the viewer than, than watching you know, the same sort of video loop with a, with a ripple effect on it. Ultimately, the only way most of us ever really experience technology is through this kind of direct interaction. And so, you know, if you ask someone to draw a picture of a computer, they don't draw kind of the inner guts of the computer, they draw the, the keyboard and mouse and screen, the parts that they see and touch and interact with. When it's technology for people to interact with, what matters and what's most important, I think, is that interaction. The real way to kind of create these interactions with computers that are just really natural and, 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 and fun and beautiful is by using the sense of touch. 
The brain is wired in this way that that kind of way of learning and interacting with the world is something that's really easy for us to do. The, the periodic table is a permanent exhibit at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. And what it lets you do is use little pucks on um, an interactive table to grab elements off of the periodic table of the elements and put them together to cause chemical reactions to happen. And so the idea is that um, when you use one of these pucks and you put it on an element, that puck that you're holding in your hand represents, say, an atom of oxygen or hydrogen or what have you. And so, like, the fact that you're holding this thing in your hand, it really changes the kind of experience that you have, you know, as compared to, say, using a touchscreen or something like this. So we were trying to kind of figure out, you know, how can we use the sense of touch more? How can we use objects to represent information and let people interact with objects in order to interact with information? And kind of um, branching out from that, how can we take advantage of other properties of the physical world, things like different scales, different textures, different materials, in order to, to build richer experiences? So one example that I had is a piece of software to help you figure out where to put a cell phone tower in the city to get the best coverage. And the computer is moving this physical object around on the table, trying to, um, trying to move it to the best position. But if you don't like what it's doing, you can just grab it and hold it in place or move it around or put something heavy on top of it. And so that's where the improvisation comes in. It's like anything that you want to do, you know, if you want to, you know, put your cup of coffee on the table, then that cup of coffee becomes part of the interaction with the computer. The idea is to try to take advantage of this mechanical intuition that everyone has and use that to have an experience of interacting with a computer that has fundamentally, you know, essentially no rules. You know, what all these projects have in common is this idea of trying to push technology a little bit in order to expand the vocabulary of design, to sort of augment the toolkit that's there, that's available for creating new kinds of experiences.